Hello and welcome to Dan Makes Things. My name's Dan and I'm building a companion robot. I've been working on the robot for a few years now and recently decided it was time to look at improving the software so that I wouldn't need to create everything myself from online examples and to allow me to take advantage of the latest tools and frameworks. Veeam is a software platform that's been designed to enable faster development of robots and smart machines by providing easy configuration and prototyping, simple sharing of functionality, and a community to support any issues. This video is sponsored by Veeam, but I want to be clear that I approached them to propose a partnership because I believe that their software is a solid approach to leveling up my project and hopefully other projects in the future. Let's take a look. VM works by installing the VM server on your device with a few simple commands. Once you're connected, you can configure the components you're using, such as motors and cameras, then control them directly from the UI, write code to teach them how to interact, or use one of their already existing examples. As you're configuring your robot, a web-enabled logger will output the status and any debug output, which can be helpful if you have issues. Before you get started on your own device, you can rent a rover for free. This is a limited time use of one of the VM rovers that are configured in the VM offices. By renting a rover, you can try out the features and configuration without needing to access your own robot. You can even program the rovers remotely. In this example, you can see that I have direct access to the motor controls, the camera, and even an overhead camera to show where it is in relation to the rest of the space. I can enable keyboard navigation, scroll down so I can see the camera, and use my keyboard to move the robot. This is particularly impressive because this VM rover is in New York and I'm based in England. There's very little lag and it's easy enough to control. You can also see some code samples ready to run so that you can use them as a starting point to program this rover yourself. When your time runs out, you can either extend your access or cancel and use it again another time. Getting set up to use VM is easy. Just create an account at app.vm.com and follow the steps. First, you want to create your new machine. And you should then see the option to view setup instructions. You can go in, configure your architecture and OS, and then begin the install process. If you're using a device such as a Raspberry Pi, take a look at the additional installation guide, which takes you through the steps in order to be able to install the OS to your SD card, install any dependencies, and get set up fully to use VM. There's even a video to talk you through the whole process. Once you're set up, you can go to the Configure tab and begin adding components, services, and other modules that you might find useful in your project. You can see here in my example, I have a few modules that I've already configured. You can configure them easily via the UI, or if you have an existing example to use, you can modify the JSON configuration directly. This makes it very easy to share configurations between different machines and with the wider community. VM has a number of existing modular resources that you can leverage to build your robot. This makes the whole process much easier than building from scratch, as you just need to add the module, set the configuration, and VM will do the rest. If you can't find what you're looking for, there's also a modular registry that allows community members to publish their own modules for others to use. I have a few available there myself, just jump into docs.vm.com, go to Platform, Registry, scroll down to Modular Resources, and search for the type of module you're interested in. Each module will link to a repository with installation instructions and any other prerequisites you might need. The modules from the registry can be configured as easily as the VM-owned modules, 
But bear in mind that the quality of these can vary depending on the state of completion and the compatibility with your hardware. As an example, let's take a look at this offline large language model module that VM has published. When I go into the repo, I can see the installation instructions down at the bottom. As long as you're running Python 3.8 plus, you should find that you can use this module yourself. And there are very few configuration steps involved. In fact, you can copy the attributes that you need in order to configure it. To set this up on my existing robot, I'm going to go to Add, then Service, and then Search for LLM. And you can see it's easily visible in the search. I'm going to add the module. I'm going to give it my own name. I like to keep the naming convention so that I understand what each module is and does. Now I can take the attributes directly from the instructions, copy them in. You'll notice that if there is a problem with the formatting, you actually get an error explaining exactly what the issue is. And once I've added those in, I can click Save. Generally, when you make a change to the configuration, the VM server will incorporate those changes. In this case, we can see the installation process starts automatically and it's waiting for the module to complete startup and registration. The logs can take a little bit of getting used to, so don't worry too much about that for now. If you do find there are any issues with installation, my tip would be to open up this menu, click restart and confirm. And then you'll see the servers restart in the background. Once the robot is showing as live again and you have package sync complete, that generally means that everything's installed and working correctly. I can also see some debug output from my custom modules. But how do we interact with this new module? Well, if you jump into the Connect tab, you can see some code samples available in different languages, and it even includes some of the modules you've installed as examples. I can also go into the Usage section of the README and see some options here. You'll notice that there are some placeholder variables in this. That's because every robot has its own unique API key, key ID, and address. Don't share these with anyone because that means they will be able to connect to your device. If you toggle this, the code will substitute those placeholders with the actual variables, and you can then just copy the code directly. I'm going to take the example from the Python here and include this in a test script. My script basically takes the example code including the connect method with the API keys populated. It then imports the chat service API. This isn't installed by default as part of the VM server. If you ever need to know how to install additional modules, the API assistant can help. Then I've taken the example code which is basically three lines. I've changed the name to match the name that I've entered within the configuration. This will then retrieve access to that service. Then I can call a method on the service with a text variable that I'm passing into main, and then it will print a response. Simple as that. Now, if I run the script and include a question at the end, we should get a response from the LLM. So let's talk about the advantages of using VM in my project specifically. The modular biped uses Python for everything except the Arduino script. Most of this has been pulled together and modified from example scripts on the internet. Although I've done my best to keep everything in order, there are deviating standards and messy scripts littered throughout the entire code base. This makes the project difficult to maintain and difficult for others to learn. In addition, the configuration of the robot involves installing all the dependencies for all the modules at once, which can often lead to errors and, given that the idea is to make the project modular, can mean people are installing dependencies for modules they'll never use. In contrast, VM's configuration process means that each module has its own dependency installation step, 
So if someone isn't using the module, they won't have to install the dependencies. And if the dependencies for a module change, the latest version can be published and those dependencies will be managed automatically. In order to configure the modules, I currently have separate JSON files for each component or module. Again, this makes modification and maintenance difficult, although easier than it used to be. VM has a single JSON that can be imported to set everyone up with the same configuration, which can then be modified via the UI as needed. This approach means that the setup of the robot goes from a long list of manual steps to a few easy UI-based steps. I can also start to leverage the modular registry and the growing list of modules that are available there, rather than building everything from scratch. The Discord support means that if I have any issues with the module I'm configuring, someone is there to help. Logging is also much more simple, as it's managed by the server. The logs are available for all modules running, and any errors are easy to track down. There are also improvements on the VM roadmap here to make it easier to use in future. OK, this all sounds good, but what about cost? Generally, software like this comes with a monthly subscription or one-time fee. In VM's case, the on-machine software is totally free and open source. For cloud-based consumption, there is a pay-for-what-you-use model in place. So for example, if I want to train a machine learning model based on 10,000 images, I could do that with existing tools offline for free but if I want the ease and convenience of doing that with VM's online ML training tools, I pay for the storage of the images and the resources used to train the model. I want to be clear, using the model once it's trained is purely on machine and therefore free. It's the cloud resources that would be chargeable. VM also gives you $5 a month, which is generally enough for basic usage in the example above. And the pricing tiers are reasonable, if you did want to go beyond that. If you're looking for more information on this, take a look at this pricing page or reach out to VM directly. So what are the next steps for me? To take advantage of all the benefits of VM, I'm planning on migrating my existing Python modules into VM modules and making them available on the registry. I'll also take some time to review existing VM modules and see what I can integrate before I reinvent the wheel, so to speak. One challenge I've had is that my modules rely heavily on the publisher subscriber design pattern, using the PyPub submodule to communicate with each other. I'm working with the VM team on an approach to manage this, so I'll publish another video with the details soon. If you're interested in trying out VM, visit app.vm.com and create a robot or render one to test theirs out. I'd love to hear more about how you use VM in your project, so feel free to join the community and share your progress. Links in the description. Thanks for watching.